This is the MAT140 video number 12 on Markov chains. Consider the following example of a transition matrix. That's the matrix given here. The columns give probabilities a credit card will be used in the next month given that it is used or not used in the current month represented by the rows. For example, the probability that a credit card is used next month, given that it was used in the current month, is 0.7, or 70%. That's coming from this entry here. The probability that the card is used next month, given that it was used in the current month. And for example, the probability that it is not used in the next month, given that it was not used in the current month, is 0.4, or 40%. Also, notice how it would make sense to expect that the probabilities on each row would add up to 1 or 100%. And that's because the two events uh, that we see in each row are complementary events. Either the card is used or it's not used. So the probability 70% that it's used would be the complement of the 30% probability that it isn't used. And similarly, here we have a 60% chance that it would be used and a 40% chance that it's not used, uh, assuming that it was not used in the month before. And each of these probabilities, 60%, 40%, add to 100%, or add to a probability of 1. Now let's look at the first question. Let's let P equal the transition matrix that's given here in the table as given above. Let's compute the matrices P squared and P cubed using a calculator. That means we're going to do P times P and P times P times P. We're going to cube that matrix. And of course you could do it by hand, but you can speed it up much faster on a calculator. So that's a good thing to know how to do. Okay, so now I have my calculator ready to go. I'm going to type in this matrix. I want to square it, cube it, see what the results are. For what comes later, might be convenient to put this matrix in as the matrix B. Of course, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to enter in this matrix as matrix B. So I'm going to go to edit matrix B. I'll put the transition matrix in as this matrix B. So it's a two by two. The entries are here, 0.7. 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 0.4. So now I want to square matrix B, so let's exit. Actually, I'm sorry, I need to go to the matrix uh, menu, get matrix B, identify the name, and then I could just use this button here for squaring. Of course, I could also say times b, but I'm going to do other powers. So let's square it like that. So there's our result. So now, because it's actually called matrix P in the work that I have here, I should recognize that it's really P squared. And that's the result. Let's try P cubed. So second matrix. The matrix I want to cube is matrix B, but now to do a power 3, I'll just say exponent 3. Okay, so there's the result there. This is just purely a math exercise and uh, operation on a matrix here in this example, but we'll use those uh, in the questions that come later, so I'll show you there how it's, how it's used. So the next question says, suppose the initial probability that a customer uses a credit card when it's first received is 30%. That is, let A be this initial probability vector of 0.3 and 0.7. So a 30% chance that it is used when it's first received and a 70% chance that it isn't used when it's first received. So let's compute these matrix matrices, A times P cubed and a times p to the 12th, and of course use a calculator because this would be ridiculous to do by hand. 
write the results and write a sentence answer explaining the meaning and significance of these results. So I'll do that. In fact, I think maybe even before I do a p cubed, why don't we just figure out what a times p is and what that would represent, what that would mean. So I'll put the calculator away for a minute. Just take this matrix P, this transition matrix P, this initial probability vector A, which is 0.3 and 0.7. Just multiply those only, which is not directly answering the question. I'll do that first for some explanation. We'll do that by hand. Think about what it represents. So before I proceed, let's just multiply A times P. So I'm recopying what matrix P is, what matrix A is, and just note that we actually couldn't do P times A because P is a 2 by 2 and multiplying that with a 1 row 2 column. So A times P we can actually do. So let's do that. A times P, matrix 0.3 and 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.4. Well, multiplying this by hand, I have a 1 by 2 that I'm multiplying with a 2 by 2. So the result will be a 1 by 2. And the result that we'll get is going to be the 0.3 times the 0.7 plus the 0.7 times the 0.6. That's the first entry. And then the second entry is the row here and the column there. So it's row 1, column 2. So it would be over here, 0.3, 0.3 plus 0 0.7, 0 0.4. Of course, you could do this on the calculator, but I want to talk about what, what it means, and I'm, I'm hoping that maybe if I write this out, I can make some comments as to the meaning of this. This matrix A was this initial, these initial probabilities of using the credit card and not. This is the probability of using it. This is the probability of not using it. And this was a transition matrix that represented the conditional probabilities of using it and not using it uh, in the following month, depending on whether it had been used uh, in the current month. So this becomes the current month. These are probabilities of the subsequent month, whether it'll be used or not. So what we see here is by multiplying this row with this column, we're getting this entry right here, which really represents the probability that it's used in the next month, given the probabilities that it was used in the current month. Multiplying this row with this column gives me these values. This column represented the chance that it's used in the next month given those probabilities of the current month. And these are the probabilities of the current month. So we're looking at the probability that it's used in the current month multiplied by the probability it's used in the next, mo next month if it was used in the current month. And here we're looking at the probability that it's not used in the current month multiplied by the probability that it is used in the next month if it was not used in the current. And adding those two together is the probability that it's used in the next month it's either used in the next month if it was used in the current month or it's used in the next month if it was not used in the current month. So that's what we're looking at, the probability of its use in the next month. And this would be the probability of it not being used the next month. So then these entries here, they are combining together to give us the probability it's not used in the next month given those probabilities of use in the current month. This was the probability that it is used in the current month coming from that entry there multiplied by this entry. This is the probability that it's not used in the next month if it was used in the current month. So by multiplying these two together 
we're finding the chance that it was used in the current month and not used in the next month if it was used in the current month. So multiplying those two probabilities gives me the probability of both of these events happening. That is, it was used in the current month and then not used in the next if it had been used in the current. And similarly, this one comes from multiplying this row, uh, well, I'm sorry, actually, this entry, the 0.7 times the 0.4, and it represents the probability that it was not used in the current month and the probability that it is not used in the next month if it was not used in the current month. <laughs> yeah. So altogether, it's the probability that it was not used or will not be used in the next month given those probabilities of its use in the current month. That's what just this represents. Just multiplying the initial probability matrix times the transition matrix, we get the probabilities that it will be used in the next month from initial probabilities of the current month. So then we could keep multiplying by additional transitional matrix matrices to figure out subsequent months' probabilities of use, one month after another, all starting with some initial probability vector of some initial or current month. We could project out into the future its probability of use. So just finishing off what this number actually is, I get 0.63 for the first one and then multiplying all of this together, you get 0.37 here, and it's good to see that these two add up to one, so it's a 100% probability. Um, these have to be complementary events. That is, we're saying there's a 63% chance of its use in the next month, and a 37% chance of its use in the next, uh, of, of its not being used in the next month, given those probabilities we had for the initial month or the current month that we're given in that matrix A. Okay, so now that we've sorted out what that actually represents, how, where that came from, the matrix A times the matrix P, what the significance of it is, let's go back and answer the original questions here. Compute the matrices A times P cubed and A times P to the 12th using a calculator. Write the results and write a sentence answer explaining the meaning and significance of these results. So let's do A times P cubed first. We need to enter matrix A into the calculator now. I already have matrix P on the calculator as matrix B. So I'm going to enter matrix A. So I need to edit matrix A. And matrix A is a one row, two column matrix. It's the 0 0.3, 0 0.7. Right here, 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. So 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 entered in for matrix A. Now I'm ready to do the multiplication. Matrix A times matrix B on the calculator to the power 3. So 0.6663 and 0.3337. So this means there is a approximately a 66.63% chance that the card would be used in the next month after three months. And so a 33.37% chance that it would not be used in the next month after three months. Now if we want to do A times P to the power 12, we've already got these matrices entered into the calculator. Let's do matrix A times what we stored in the calculator is matrix B. I have to raise to the power 12. A times matrix B to a power to the power 12. All right, 
right, so there it is. Now, since I know that the first one is really basically two-thirds, I know that the second probability there would be one-third, 0.3 repeating, because these are complementary events. But one way to get that visual visible on the screen is to store it in another matrix. Let's store it in matrix C. So now we can go in and edit matrix C just to look at it. See, it's already put it as a 1 by 2. So there it is. 0.6 repeating and 0.3 repeating. And we could just decide to round off anywhere here because it's 0.6 repeating. A convenient place to round it off is 0 0.667. So it makes sense to have it round off in a way that it adds up to a probability of 1. The two events together are complementary. They should add up to 1. So if we choose to round this one up because it's a repeating 6, the other one would be 0.333. So this is the probability, a 66.7% chance that it would be used in the next month after 12 months pass, and a 33.3% chance that it wouldn't be used in the next month after 12 months pass. So approximately 66.7% chance the card is used in the next month after a year has passed, and a approximately 33.3% chance that it is not used in the next month after 12 months have passed. Okay, that's the answer, and I hope this video has been helpful.